In FLL, giant attachments are very common at the highest level. In this video, I'm going to talk about why we do them, how we try to make them, and I'm going to explain one of mine, which scores 290 points in one run. By far the most important reason we use giant attachments is we save time both with the changeovers and the robot runs. The giant attachments allow the robots to score a larger portion of the points of the field per run, which allows the operators to not need to make as many changeovers, and allows the robot to not need to spend as much time driving in and out of the home and launch areas, as well as simplifying the path the robot actually does. All of these things can save very significant amounts of time, which allows the robot to spend more time scoring points. Now let's move on to the strategy we use to make the giant attachments. If you remember watching my last video, I talked about the three steps of building an attachment. Making the manipulator, which is the thing that scores points. Building the bridge, which is a thing that makes the manipulator work with the robot. And creating the control, which is making the thing that allows the robot to power and move the manipulator. Well, with the giant attachments, the strategy is a little different. In this case, the bridge, which is the thing that makes all the manipulators work with the robots, is going to be very, very large because we're going to have tons of manipulators. The controls will also be more complicated as we're going to have to have multiple controls with multiple manipulators being controlled by each of them. We do this by having multiple mechanisms where one motor powers multiple things. However, sometimes you may want to find a way to not need a motor to power something. Giant attachments take a lot of skill to make, and it would be very hard for me to actually go through everything it takes to make a giant attachment in a short video, but I hope this gives you a rough idea of what we try to do when we make them. All right, let's talk about my giant attachment and some of how it works. We will start this program with four of the five experts. The robot will start by driving out from the eastern launch area straight to the museum. And there are no special mechanisms here, it just pushes the masterpiece, an audience member, and Anna, the museum curator, to the museum. At the museum, the robot will flip a pneumatic switch that will cause the arms to go down, and then the robot will flip it again to bring them back up. This motor also controls a conveyor belt at the back, which has audience members and experts. One of the arms will push down on the immersive experience to score it, and the other arm will drop some cannons, which will shoot the orange lever on the augmented reality statue, also scoring it. This arm with the cannons also has some spears to pick up Sam, the stage manager, later. The robot uses a special mechanism to be able to control both the pneumatic arms and the conveyor belt at the back. In one direction, the robot will toggle the pneumatic arms to go up or down, depending on what position they're in. And if the robot spins it the other way, the conveyor belt will start dispensing audience members and or experts. This mechanism uses a differential and two ratchets. When the differential spins in one direction, one ratchet will allow the differential to rotate, and the other ratchet will not, which only allows one of the two axles to spin. However, if we go in the other direction, the other axle gets a spin because that ratchet now allows it to spin, but the original ratchet does not. The robot will use this conveyor belt mechanism to deliver experts and audience members along its path. It also uses some spears to pick up Sam the stage manager using those pneumatic arms we talked about earlier. The robot will also back into the theater scene change to score it using just the back of the robot. On the final parts of this robot run, the robot will use a plate that will flop down, and this will be used to score the sound mixer. And at the same time this plate gets flopped down, the wheel that spins the light show will spin around. We also have a little funnel that makes sure that the light show stays upright and doesn't fall over. 
It also tr has enough force to break the connection between the man and the funnel, dropping it on the light show. And finally, the robot ends in the film set to score the last few points, including Sam the stage manager, which she picked up near the theater scene change. All right, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to upload a video for the last few weeks because I've been very busy in real life. If you do want me to help your FL team, I know the FL season for the 2023-2024 season is almost over, but if you want me to help your team either for the next season or to finish this current season strong, please feel free to email me down below, and also, please like the video, subscribe to this channel, and yeah. I'll see you in the next one.